about pros posting old photos. What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke. You're watching Strength Addicts on all social media platforms, powered by TitanMedicalCenter.com, your go-to source for all the amazing therapies, number one in patient care, and Amazon's Fit Mag celebrate the female physique. I'm wearing the Kentucky Muscle shirt. Let's dive into this topic. So, guys, this is nothing new. The top pros, they've been doing it for years, especially with the advent of social media. Why? Because they don't want you guys to know what improvements they're making. And I think that the single most talked about bodybuilder posting, allegedly, allegedly posting old pictures is reigning Mr. Olympia Hadi Chupan, the Persian wolf. Now, this is a guy who years ago was accused of using synthol by one Dave Palumbo and threatened to sue Dave. Now, of course, nothing came out of that. But, you know, again, you know, good luck suing strength addicts or muscle sport or whoever uh, for saying that you're using old pictures. But it stands to reason, though, that he is one of the most isolated Mr. Olympias. He's a throwback to Dorian Yates. He's even more isolated than uh, Big Rami. Now, that's saying a lot because Big Rami, you know, when he was on top, didn't even do uh, the Pittsburgh, you know, Jim Mannion show. And I still believe that cost him dearly because, you know, last year we saw where he placed. We saw where he placed at the Arnold Classic. And a lot of people say, look, it, it doesn't have one thing to do with the other. You know, Bob Chicarillo's made the point. Other commentators have made the point. But I am of the opinion that, listen, you don't go to the president's show and you're the number one Bible in the world, there's going to be hell to pay. And he's not Mr. Olympia. And he's probably never going to be Mr. Olympia again. Now, aside from that... You know, I believe that if you're going to be the number one bodybuilder in the world, you need to do press. Hadi doesn't do press. You need to make appearances. Hadi doesn't make appearances. Now, on top of all of that, now people are saying that, you know, he's posting old pictures. And, you know, Hadi is also starting to kind of unravel in a way because Hadi is trained by who? Any guesses out there? Hani Rambod. Now, Hani Rambot is also prepping Derek Lunsford. And Hadi has gone on record to say, it's my time. I'm on top now. To suggest that, you know, people are already making the argument last year that Derek should have won and this year that Derek's going to win. I mean, you look at his back and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you that, you know, Derek is just building upon building upon building muscle mass. And the shape is there. The condition is there. Not to mention the fact that he's stateside, which Hadi is not. And so Derek, in a way, is, you know, making the rounds as if he were Mr. Olympia. Now, he's not saying he's Mr. Olympia, but I'm saying if you look at how he's getting down, you look at how he's being heralded, you look at how he's being billed, you look at how the promoters are treating him, and it's almost as if he's the placeholder Mr. Olympia. And I think that, you know, Hadi getting it was sort of... Um, it was the right thing to do. This was a guy who arguably in 2020 was kind of, you know, overlooked for Big Rami. He was overlooked for Phil Heath. He was overlooked for Brandon Curry, who was trying to defend his title. And uh, he got that People's Choice Award. He was the most popular bodybuilder in Orlando that year. A lot of people wanted to see him win. And when he didn't win, I think that they wanted him to get, you know, some sort of, you know, um, justice. And so I think that him getting it last year made all the sense in the world. However, this year, it's going to be Derek Lunsford. But then you've got other people to look at as well. You've got Samson Dowda, who won the Arnold Classic. you got Nick Walker, who's looking phenomenal. you got Hunter Labrada. you got Ian Valera that just won Toronto. So you've got a lot of guys who they're going to be looking at, not to mention Brandon Curry, who is a consummate professional, who's very, very, very well-liked. You know what I mean? But then Hadi Chupan, you know, he's going to kind of be, I feel, the underdog, even though he's the reigning Mr. Olympia. I see that my man Glenn's in the house. Don't forget Amazon's Fit Mag tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with wellness pro Melissa Guerrero. It's going to be a fantastic live. And um, I will be there and I'll be sharing this all around. Actually, this will be the clip that I'll be sharing. But I just got to say, though, you know, when it comes to old photos, and I'll be writing an article for Iron Magazine, which should be out tomorrow on this very topic. It's nothing new. It's almost status quo, honestly. It's almost status quo because the reality of the matter is, is that Mr. Olympia and the top five, top six, they don't want you to know what they're up to 24-7, especially Mr. Olympia. Because like I said, he's in Iran. 
He doesn't do appearances. He's not doing guest posings. He doesn't do media. And he already kind of has like this Derek Lunsford 10,000 pound elephant to deal with. And I don't think that he wants to get in the habit of releasing photos every day. Now, he does put out training content, which is good. It's important that he releases training content because that keeps the fans somewhat, you know, engaged. And Hadi is somebody that trains very hard in the gym. He's somebody that lifts good poundages. He's got good form. But when you see him in the gym, he's usually like rocking a tank top or a sort of short sleeve t-shirt. So you don't get to really see the abs. You don't really get to see much of the pecs. Sometimes if he's wearing a t-shirt, you don't really get to see a lot of the, the um, shoulder development, uh, whether it's front, whether it's rear, whether it's traps. You don't really see that. So in a way, he's kind of, you know, kicking it old school and hiding a little bit. But I think that he's hiding a little too much. You look at this year's Pittsburgh, he wasn't there. He wasn't invited because they knew that he wouldn't show because he's in Iran again. And again, it's nothing against him, but he lives in one of the most isolated countries in the world. And so, I mean, again, do we want a Mr. Olympia that not only will not, but cannot travel? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I think that last year, a very, very strong case could have made, been made for Derek. Um, and this year, I think it's going to be lights out. It's going to be Derek Lunsford. He's going to win everything. And I think it's going to come down to, it's going to be kind of a repeat of the Arnold Classic. We're going to see another showdown between uh, Samson Dowda and Nick Walker. Again, I think that we may also see Andrew Jacked up in there. Andrew Jacked is very, very dangerous. Hunter Labrada is very dangerous. Uh, Good Vito is doing some damage. I don't know if Good Vito is going to be quite up there this year, but, you know, he's doing a lot of damage. And then you got other guys like Ian Valera. Ian's win in Toronto, even though, you know, I got to tell you something. Ian has taken a lot of abuse uh, since he won Toronto from a lot of very, very loud critics that I think wanted to see Ian kind of cast aside. And I'll tell you something, the sport of bodybuilding, where we are right now in the sport, I don't like it. I don't like it because you're only as good as your last placing. And it didn't used to be that way. You know, like it used to be like if a guy like Akeem Williams or a guy like um, Ruley Winkler or a guy like William Bonac was in the mix – it didn't matter how he placed the last show or even a year or even two years back. It wasn't like this before. But ever since, social media has become so much more uh, a factor in the sport. The fans have developed a little bit of a bandwagon mentality. And so unless you won your last show, you no longer count. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the craziest thing. And so I think that a lot of people... Uh, we're ready already to put Ian Valera aside. Like he was no longer in the conversation. Then he goes to Toronto and he dominates. And now instead of people, you know, giving him those pats on the back, now they're kind of like, well, well, he didn't, did he do enough to win? Yes, because he won. Uh, you know what I mean? But it, it's the craziest thing though, guys. It's the craziest thing because when the fans sometimes they forget about you it's very hard to come back from that and i'm so happy that ian was able to seal a win in toronto seal a path to the mr olympia but at the same time it's just it's it's frustrating because this is not a guy that just won by coincidence ian is a you know top 6 top 7 guy uh who you know uh, hit a couple bumps on the road there but he's back in full form, and he really didn't have that big of a hiatus either. But like I said, we're in a position right now in the sport of bodybuilding where the fans, they have a very, very short memory. And if you didn't do all your last show or a couple of shows, then you're out of the conversation. So again, I think in that climate, it makes a lot of sense why reigning Mr. Olympia, Hadi Chupan, does not want to release photos. You know, um, but I think, you know, you, you got to really sometimes you got to kind of like um, you, you kind of have to be aware of what you say, because, you know, I complained so much in 2020, 2021 and 2022, saying that Big Rami was basically a hermit, a throwback to the Dorian Yates days, you know, a recluse. And I got to tell you. You know, uh, Big Rami runs circles around Hadi Chupan because Hadi is like, I mean, you might as well be Mr. Olympia from North Korea because when you're talking about Iran, the only other country that is more isolated than Iran in the world from us in the United States and Western Europe is North Korea. So, again, it doesn't make any sense to me.
You know, I would have thought, look, here's the deal, and I'm just going to end on this. This is not an anti-Iran post. It's not an anti-Hadi post. It's just a post. It's a. It's not a post. It's an Instagram Live where I'm just basically just, uh, you know, look, we are in the social media age. We are in a place in the sport of bodybuilding where the fans no longer can, like, contain themselves for the usual four-month off season. That's why, in my opinion, the Mr. Olympia is in November. It used to be in December, but it's not going to come back to September. It's just not because I think that bodybuilding fans want more bodybuilding. And so by putting the Olympia in November, maybe they're going to start drawing the Arnold back to February, maybe back to January. I think we're in a spot in bodybuilding where the fans do not want an off season. They want it to go 24 seven. And that also speaks to the fact that social media is the culprit because people want constant content, you know? And again, that also goes back to these guys like legendary top six, top seven guys. They do poorly in a couple of shows. People forget about them, like literally forget about them because social media is just that powerful. You know what I mean? But um, what I'd like to end on is simply this, and it's going to be the basis of my article for Iron Magazine, which should be out tomorrow about Hadi Chupan and the allegations of fake photos or old photos or whatever. It is this. If you win the Mr. Olympia, Forget about going pro, okay? Like, 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 let's say you live in Iran or North Korea or, or like Afghanistan or something, okay? And you get a pro card. Is that a justification to pick up your whole family and move to the United States or Western Europe or Australia? Probably not, because when you get the pro card, you don't automatically get money, right? But I think that if you win one of the two biggest titles, the Arnold Classic or the Mr. Olympia, where you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars for one show, I think that's a justification, not just a justification, but I think that's a green light for you, all the stars aligned for you to get the hell out of whatever hermit kingdom you're in and move to the United States, Australia, Canada, Western Europe, anywhere but where you are. You know what I mean? And especially if you're Mr. Olympia. So basically, bodybuilding fans will have only seen Hadi Chupan for the 2022 Olympia that he won. And they will never see him again in person, whether competing, guest posing, in a booth, signing autographs, in a gym with people besides that one weekend in 2022. They won't see him again till that one weekend in 2023 in Orlando, Florida. And to me, you know, that does not grow the sport of bodybuilding at all. Like not even a little. So, you know, it's just one of those things. Now, you compare that to Derek Lunsford, who lives here in the United States, perfect English, tours the world, guest poses like crazy, you know, works expos, does interviews. And, and let's be honest, his physique is just, you know, it, 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 it's just he's killing it. I mean, the back, you, you look at that back and it's like a throwback to Ronnie Coleman, to David Henry, to Kai Green. So again, and plus Derek doesn't have that like like that wonky midsection that Hottie's got. He also doesn't have like those like bizarre, I don't want to say injection sites because I don't want to get sued by Hottie and he will sue you. But Hottie's got some stuff going on. Plus his whole look, it's just not it's just not there. Like I said, a lot of people had Derek winning last year. Uh and those that didn't will have him winning this year. I mean, it's just it's just night and day. I think Hottie has topped out where he can go, whereas Derek has already surpassed him and has, you know, just so much more to go, so much more to go. And also, age is not on Hottie's side, whereas it is on Derek's. Uh, it, really, honestly, 2023, it's a Derek Lunsford show. You, you know, I mean, look, you know, Nick Walker is going to be in the mix. Samson's going to be in the mix. Andrew Jack's going to be in the mix. Maybe Good Vito might get up there. Maybe Michael Chris will get up there. Maybe Hunter Labrado will get up there. But if we're talking about who is the man to win, it's Derek Lunsford. And Hottie, that weighs on Hottie. He's already made the statements like, look, I'm on top right now. This is my time. You know what I mean? But that's just not enough. It's just not enough. You know, he's throwing out some warning shots. And I think that if Derek were not prepped by the same coach as Hottie, Derek would have taken him to social media and just cleaned the floor with him. But because they share that coach. They share that sponsor. And also because I think Derek wants to be a good sport. He doesn't want to rain on Hottie's parade, especially because 
Hottie's days on top are numbered. Like, I would be shocked. I mean, I would be absolutely shocked if Hottie defended his title successfully in 2023. I, I just don't see it happening. So is Hottie, you know, posting old ass photos? Probably. Is that something new? Not really. Does it look bad for him being that he doesn't go to shows, doesn't go to expos? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, you know, again, guys, I hope that, you know, you watch this at some point. It's going to go on YouTube. I'm actually sharing these on YouTube and sharing these on uh, TikTok and Twitter. That's like sort of like the, the new, it's not a New Year's resolution because we're in June, but it's like a, as New Year's of a resolution as you can get uh, in June. Uh, but I'm going to start sharing these in a lot of other places because I'm seeing a lot of activity on Facebook and a lot of activity on YouTube. So I don't know if the algorithms change or whatnot. I'm using shorts a lot on YouTube and I'm seeing a little bit of a little bit of movement there. So um, these last couple of weeks were tough because I switched jobs. So I was working in an immigration law office. Now I'm working in a law office that by the way, is on the 18th floor. And anybody that knows anything about me knows I'm terrified of elevators. I got over that, which is fantastic. I can't be taking stairs 18 up and 18 down. But I'm working. What's up, B-Moves? And I'm, and I'm sorry I've ignored everybody coming in, but I, I've seen a lot of you guys come in. About 20, 30 people have come in and out. I really appreciate that. But like when I when I get on a topic, I, I cannot like deviate. I can't even say hello to people because Kim Fatass Haynes was in here as well uh, because I'll, I'll lose track. But um so I'm on the 18th floor now, downtown Louisville. I've always wanted to work downtown. And the firm that I'm working at, I will continue doing immigration law. As a matter of fact, well, I, I won't get into that, but I saw a seminar, let's say, uh, recently that, that you know, I just knew more than the person presenting it. But anyways, um, I'm continuing immigration law, but I will also be doing family law, contested divorces, contested custodies, contested, 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 also criminal defense and some felony stuff, which is really cool. And maybe at some point, some steroid stuff, uh, because I would really like to do what my man Rick Collins does in New York. I would like to do it here. And I'm also going to be doing some personal injury, which I did years ago. And there's a lot of money in that. And uh, working with expert witnesses and reconstruction artists and looking at video. It's just like, I am so much happier because I am a person that likes to be engaged and a person that likes challenge. And once I get used to something, once I know how to do something, it, it feels like kind of like robotic and I just kind of lose a lot of that edge. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I do a good job, but I get bored. And if I'm bored at a job, I don't care how much money I'm making, I'm miserable. You know what I mean? So here it's just like, it's just, I'm so excited. The other thing is I was traveling. I went to Costa Rica for five days and that was amazing. And then I went to Chile, my mom's country, and I was there for six days, and that was amazing as well. So I was out of the United States for 11 days. So between switching jobs, being out of the country, now I'm back. It's just been, you know, and, and also when I was out of the country, two deaths in the sport of bodybuilding, like, really, really rocked me hard. One, of course, Mighty Mike Quinn, who many of you have seen the interview that I did at Strength Addicts back in June of 2015, seven years ago where I went to Mike's house, his parents' house, and I got to meet his mom and his dad. And uh, it was just like a really good interview because, you know, nobody has ever done an interview with Mighty Mike Quinn like I have. And that's not for me. It's for people like Kevin Gretsch of Evolution of Bodybuilding. It's from a lot of people that have seen the interview because we went into areas that MD didn't, RX didn't, nobody has. And um, the video's got like, I think like 70,000 views on, on, on uh, well, on YouTube, it's got 70,000 views. On Facebook, it has another truckload of hits. And on Twitter, it's got a lot. So co collectively, it's probably like up to a quarter of a million. Uh, Mike loved the interview. His mom and dad loved the interview when it came out. His sister, Kelly, like, I mean, everybody loved the interview. So um, it, it really, it hit hard because after that interview, you know, we hung out many times at shows, expos, that sort of thing. And uh, he was always so grateful for it. And, you know, what's crazy is that I actually edited that video down. It was over an hour. And the finished video, I think, is something like 45 minutes. But it's because he was saying things. I, I think I may still have the raw uncut. But the thing is, is that he was saying things that, like, no lie, would have had me sued badly. And uh, But knowing Mighty Mike Quinn the way that I knew him, I would say that a lot of the stuff that he said was true. 
But uh, I, I just, I, you know, I had, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I, you know, so I did edit it, and I took a lot of flack for that, and I've taken a lot of flack for it since, especially after his passing. But my number one priority is not journalistic integrity. I'm sorry, it's strength out. I got to protect my brand, you know. And sometimes, you know, uh, you want to do the right thing. You want to be this, 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 you know, no holds barred, no cookie cutter, just like put it all on, on, you know free press and all that, but that, you know, that's why if you can do it, that's, that's awesome. But I have to protect strength addicts and I have to protect myself. Uh, so I, you know, I don't, I have no regrets in having exercised a little bit of, of, of editing and discretion there. The other person that passed away, this was crazy, but I was actually in Chile when El Toro, Cristian Lovarede, who was like the biggest best, most respected bodybuilder from Chile and arguably one of the top guys in Latin America. I was in Chile. He was in Chile and he died. And, um, you know, I wrote an article for Iron Magazine that I'm very proud of that you guys can check out. And um, he is somebody who went as high as number three in the world. He put Chile on the map for bodybuilding. He was the bridge between guys like Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, Gunter Schlerkamp, and Latin America. Because a lot of these competitors, the promoters would pay them top dollar. Oh, you know, fly them first class, put them in great hotels, wine them and dine them. But the thing is, even though the money was right, the air was right, the hotel was right, these top guys, they didn't know anybody in Chile. So a lot of times they wouldn't go down there. Cristian competed here in the United States, competed in Europe, was number three in the world in the amateurs, you know, at the World Games at the South American Championship. So he he was able to create like this very, very important bridge between Chile and South America and guys like Ronnie and Jay and Gunter. And so it wasn't just that he put Chile on the map and bodybuilding. It wasn't just that he was an accomplished bodybuilder that also competed here in the United States and Europe, but he's able to provide that link between the elite guys here, the top of the top and Chile. And, and you know, so he did a lot for Chile and bodybuilding, but um, he also had uh, an issue where he got caught up with some legal issues. He prepped some guys, one of which died, might have had some pre-existing conditions. I don't know. Um, you know, he was bringing in some 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 supplements from Argentina that weren't legal in Chile, and um, one of the big TV stations there did sort of like a kind of a naughty thing. They did like a they got together with the family of of one of the guys that died. It was kind of murky, and they basically did this expose where they sent a guy in supposedly to get trained by him, bought drugs from him, and then the cops somehow were in the mix because coincidentally during this series, the cops raided the house, and the you know the media happened to be there when the raid took place, and it's a lot of weirdness, you know what I mean? A lot of weirdness, and the, and what happened was you know he went off to prison the country that loved him and celebrated him when he was on top turned its back on him and so he was basically like a shattered man there for a few years but what he did was even though he had like practically no renal function the country turned its back on him he was basically written off he was able to come back rebuild his life put his bodybuilding show back on had a gym you know was doing interviews again he he basically reclaimed his life and and he put himself right back on top so, you know, to find out years later, when I'm in Chile after not being there for 23 years, uh, in fact, I was meeting up with a guy, Felipe Barra, who has been following Strength Dice for over a decade. And when he saw that I was in Chile, he messaged me, said, hey, we should hang out. So that day we hung out, we had coffee, we took a selfie together that I'll be putting up here in a little bit. But um, just just like literally hours before we met up and had coffee in Santiago, we got the news that Cristian died and that was rough. So, you know, being out of the country and finding out that two of my heroes in bodybuilding died within days of each other, because that's how it happens, you know? That's how it happens in bodybuilding, you know? Like, you know, when one dies, another and another and another, it's just like a domino effect, you know? I remember, I still to this day remember uh, when Rich Piana died. I mean, I was like, my heart sank to the floor because I loved Rich so much. And then like three days later, Dallas McCarver died as well. And uh, it was just like, what, what is going on here? And that's, that's how it happens in bodybuilding. You know, uh, last year was a really bad year in bodybuilding. I think we lost like, I don't know, like 15 guys. It was, it was really bad. It was really bad. And when you think about it, you know, Rich Piana was like 44, 45 years old. He's my age now. He might have been a little bit older. I don't know. But Dallas, 
Dallas was 26 years old. I mean, you know, he was young. You know, George the Bull Peterson, he was young. Yeah, I mean, you got guys that, you know, died way, way too soon. Like, way too soon. So, and then, you know, so, but unfortunately, you know, this is a sport, I think we are all well aware that this is a sport that has a lot of risk involved. This is a sport where, you know, guys will take it to the limit. They'll they'll push themselves to the limit, you know. And, and really, when you think about it, um, that's why I think bodybuilding is more hardcore in a lot of regards than football or basketball. I mean, how many football players are going to take it to that limit to get on the field, you know? A lot of them are overpaid divas that you don't pay them what they want, they won't play. Bodybuilding, most people don't make a cent, but they just love getting on stage. They love competing. They may not love the diet so much. They may not even love the drugs so much, but they love competing. They'll do whatever it takes. And not only will they do whatever it takes to compete, they'll do whatever it takes to look their best because there's a lot of pride involved, whether it's significant other, their coaches, their gym, their sponsors, their fans. There's a lot of pride involved. You know, and you don't see that in some of the other sports. In fact, you don't see that in the other sports at all. So, again, bodybuilding is very, very special. And I think that's why we all love it so much. But uh, some guys just don't know when too much is too much, if you know what I mean. In any event, guys, I look forward to seeing you all at uh, Amazon's Fit Magazine, Amazon's Fit Mag tonight, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Glenn is joined by wellness pro Melissa Guerrero. It's going to be a fantastic live. I hope that you guys also head on over to TitanMedicalCenter.com. Check out all the amazing therapies. Don't forget Titan Medical Services, 49 out of 50 states. The only state that Titan does not service is Idaho. So unless you live in Idaho, if you live in the United States, TitanMedicalCenter.com has got you covered. They can use telemedicine if you're not in Tampa. And they've got some amazing therapies. I got to tell you, Serenity, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Serenity. It is a fantastic therapy. Also, the ECA Plus stack, absolutely fantastic. And if you want to put on some good size, some good strength, by all means, Check out the MK677. You will not be disappointed. So, guys, everybody that came through, I appreciate it. I've been a little bit out, literally been out of the country and uh, switched jobs. But very happy to be back. We'll be doing these Instagram lives at least once, if not twice a week. And I will also be resuming Strength Addicts Kentucky Live Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to check out all the great Strength Addicts Hub pages, Strength Addicts, Strength Addicts Kentucky, Indiana Bodybuilding, Strength Addicts Ohio, but also wellness competitors, bikini division, muscular ladies, I mean 212 Bodybuilding. Check them all out. They are all title sponsored by TitanMedicalCenter.com, your go-to source for all the amazing therapies, number one in patient care, and Amazon Spit Mag. Celebrate the female physique. Thanks, guys.